Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, I'm Kerry L. Watts and welcome to the show. Now, I was reading recently on Forbes that effective personal branding will differentiate you from the competition and allow you to build trust with prospective clients and even employers. An entrepreneur article said that brand messages are reshared 24 times more than when, post, uh, when posted by an employee over the brand itself, as they have over 500% more reach and 10 times more followers than their company. And business.com even stated that social media activity by employees or individuals are seven times more likely to convert into a lead over company social posts. And my guest today has some fascinating insight into personal branding, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So please welcome Annalise James to the show. Welcome, Annalise. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. So let's go back to that stat of employees getting seven times more leads um, if they post rather than the company itself. Like, what, what's your take on that? Well, it's interesting because you're touching on a couple of different things here. But um, for me, you're talking about brand ambassadors. So people by people, we might be living in quite a digital or technological age, but actually human interaction is so, so important. And it's incredibly important for building trust. And whilst we do trust brands like Coca-Cola or Rolex or whatever products you want to think of, like Apple, um, people, you can't you can't it connect with products in the same way that you connect with people. So I'm really not surprised with that stat. And just to add a stat of my own, um, you're, you're 90% more likely to buy from someone you trust than someone you don't, quite clearly, um, particularly if someone's been recommended to you as well. So it goes through referral as well. So actually what's happening here when you're talking about people buying from people they are representing the brand. They're adding that personal touch to it and they're building trust with individuals and then people are more likely to trust and then to buy. So it's quite fascinating, actually. I like that stat. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> Do it. I'll uh, copy and paste it to you. <laughs> I really like what you just said um, about uh, that trust element and like how we buy stuff based on referrals. And like just from my own personal you know, life. Um, I do that even just with like a cleaning product. If some, if, you know, if my nan says, right, you've got to get this because it's going to do that. I was like, great, let's buy it. Don't care how much it costs. Let's just do it. Cause I trust that source. Um, but I think it's the same for like big products as well. You know, like, um, training programs or uh, cars, you know, things like that. It's, it's kind of all types of products, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I think particularly if you're working in a service-based industry, so with products and stuff, you know, it's kind of a, it's more of a transactional thing. You trust someone said something, so you try it and you liked it and therefore, you know, kind of reinvigorates the trust. You then trust it, you become brand advocate. But if you're working in a service um, environment, so any sort of like counselling service, therapists, that sort of thing, I always talk to those individuals about how important trust is because, you're actually having to deliver something quite personal to people. So if you work on personal branding and you kind of work on that relationship building through all of your social channels, you know, you can actually just get clients coming to you more readily, ready to have work, like to work with you, to sit in the chair with you, to have therapy with you, or even say, for example, when, when I do marketing for people, like maybe they'll trust me to do their marketing strategy. So it's, it's such a fundamental thing and it's so and that's what I love personal branding because it's so hardwired into everything that we do you know there's a lot of psychology behind it there's a kind of a lot of communication skills around it I just find it absolutely fascinating mm. and what would you say is the biggest like myth about personal branding that people have I think people think well people think the personal branding is talking about themselves but it's absolutely not and this is the thing I tell people all the time. I go to workshops and I'm saying, right, cool. So you're a personal brand. Here you go. You stand for this, this, this. These are your values. And this is how you talk about your values. What people think with personal branding is they just talk about themselves all the time. Like, oh, I'm here having a coffee. And I'm being super optimistic because optimistic is one of my values. Or I'm super being, you know, people orientated because people orientated is one of my values. No, no, no. What you have to do is you have to 
reverse engineer all your messaging so that every single thing you say represents your value, but also something beneficial to other people. Mm. which is really fascinating because people just think oh you just talk about yourself and like because they see people like say Kim Kardashian who you know it's quite clearly (laughs) offering a slightly different like personal brand idea but for me and what works for me personally and what works for my clients is making everything that they say of benefit to other people because people essentially really only care about themselves they want to know things that will benefit them. They want to learn more. They want to see more. They want to understand more. They want to learn great facts. You know, people want things. They want to build their armory of knowledge, skills, um, information to make themselves look better. So if you're working as a personal brand, you do that and you put yourself out there as a knowledge giver, but you also do it in such an interesting way that people also really like you and they kind of follow you. They feel something when you're posting something and then they... They become part of your brand ambassador. You see? It's very mm-hmm. exciting. Love that. And I have to say, for me, my favourite personal brand is Mr. Richard Branson. Oh, I knew you were going to say it. It's funny because oh, I do this talk and I have uh, him, Oprah and Trump. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And, um, always I get the audience to feedback and I'm like, right, who? Do, how do you know these people? What do you know about them? And Richard Branson is just universally adored by Absolutely everybody. He's irresistible. Yeah. yeah. He's such a successful brand. And so is Trump, actually, although he is very divisive. Um, he, love him or hate him, he's one of the most successful personal brands there is, mm-hmm. building himself into, in business, being that kind of brutally honest sort of person, translating that then into politics and sort of America as a brand, America as a business. It's a really quite incredible story, really, if you look at his uh, brand journey. Mm. I think what I love about Richard Branson is, um, I mean, obviously, I I mean, I work in PR, so he's a PR dream. So I think that's why I'm really drawn to him. Um, he, he has a massively successful, you know, goodness knows how many companies, um, but actually his personal brand is completely separate to the company. But obviously it will, you know, it, it's, they're sort of, go together when it's appropriate but he is like on his own in a way isn't he it's not just Richard Branson oh yeah he he does this he's got a train company he's got an airline it's just like Richard Branson and people just automatically have all these assumptions about him it's so true they sort of work hand in hand but also the other thing about it is they give you touch points so people might approach Virgin, have a perception of Virgin, and then they, they realise that Richard Branson started that company, and then they look at him and they think, oh, I admire this person. Or it might be like they admire Richard Branson, then they find out more about all the collection of companies that he owns. So in either case, they give value to each other, which is quite clever. Mm. And it, uh, creating a personal brand isn't just for these big-name celebs and entrepreneurs or, or anybody in the public eye. Like Every individual can create this personal brand and actually already has one even if they don't even know it right yeah absolutely the key to starting a good personal brand is actually just to be 150,000 percent yourself okay (laughs) this is the problem so some people will start making a personal brand but they'll be sort of wanting to put out a certain perception of themselves which doesn't work because people there's something a bit disingenuous about it and they're like they seem really nice but actually I not quite sure that they are that nice like I feel like what they're saying isn't quite right so for me I think you've got to be you and you've got to absolutely own it so if you're really sarcastic then just be really sarcastic all the time if you're really upbeat kind of Disney princess happy all the time be that because you know what there's like seven billion people in the world and there are lots and lots of people who want to hear different voices and there's a huge category of people that would want to hear your specific voice or your sarcastic tone, or, you know, your dry humour, or your brutal honesty, you know? So there's value in however you are, because you are one individual in seven billion, and that is really, really powerful, actually, if you harness who you are and you know who you are. I love that. I was actually going, I was thinking about this um, just before we we started speaking, actually, about um, wanting to ask you about being yourself. Now, I, I... 100% 100% agree with you it's best to be yourself and not sort of be fake and, and make things up but do you think there should still be a filter as to how much personality you reveal not I think, 
yeah, I hundred percent think you have to be kind of professional with it. You know, we're not a hundred percent the same person all the time. Like some days you have down days, sometimes you feel sad, like you don't want to do anything or see anyone, or sometimes you're you're you know frustrated with life, whatever. So when you're online particularly, because online is such a difficult place to navigate sometimes, as we all know, um, you do have to be a you know, a good day version of yourself always although it doesn't mean you can't be vulnerable because vulnerability is actually really quite strong particularly when you're looking at a personal brand so talking about things you've overcome or achievements you've um um achievements you've achieved that doesn't make any sense (laughs) um successes you've achieved you know overcoming adversity really can strengthen your brand because you're again bringing that personal element to it but i think day to day when you're constructing your brand, you work from the grassroots of yourself. But then, you know, if you're hardcore yourself all the time and you do make a slip up, that is just you. You can just say, look, I'm really sorry. Hold your hands up. Say, look, I'm really sorry. Yeah, that came across really badly and I didn't quite expect that. But but that's just my personality and I didn't realise that. Sorry. Mm. You know, you kind of, you do put out a slightly better version, but I wouldn't say so far removed that people would think you were fake yeah I think that's really interesting actually I love that that um I mean I I know myself and it's so funny because I'm kind of in this you know a similar um uh, place in my business as well in that you know putting people out there and doing PR and stuff but I have to say um like when I'm thinking about myself and you know I'll say to clients about that whole you know vulnerability and let's you know do a personal share and let's do this um because I understand the value of it but actually when I go to do it myself I am so scared and so nervous to put that stuff out there because you kind of think oh gosh you know what people are going to say they're going to judge me um they're not going to buy from me if they know that I don't know, I did this five years ago or something. What would you say to someone who's kind of, you know, wants to put themselves out there, but is a little bit afraid? Well, I think with personal branding, you will get back who you want. Because Mm. if you're going to be brave enough to put yourself out there and your views out there and, you know, do things very much your way, you are going to attract other people that like you and like to work that way so you should actually find the opposite happens you wouldn't attract people that you think oh god I didn't want to work with this person or you know they don't like me or they're criticizing me because actually what should happen is you sort of create um I like to think of it as the three c's so you basically act very very consistently with your messaging so you put constantly out there your say five values I always say to people and you constantly put those messages out there over and over and over again so say it's giving you give 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 business advice give video articles write blogs da, 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 give 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 all the time and what happens is you attract people who are also giving mm. which is not a bad thing because they're like you what happens is once you're consistent enough, you actually create sort of a collective identity. Everybody has an idea of who you are. You sort of create a critical mass about who you are. So this is when people ask about Richard Branson. Um, when I say at the beginning of the workshop, like, who is Richard Branson? They all tell me the most insane stories about him. They're like, oh, yeah, tubular bells and spacecraft and all this stuff. <laughs> stuff I don't even know. And I'm like what is happening like everyone in the room feels like they know him because they create a collective Mm. identity a collective value of him which obviously resonates with people and creates trust and then the third c for me is connection so actually you start to trust someone you connect with them you maybe refer them you work with them further you know you kind of build that connection and you know if they consistently are consistent with their message you don't have any reason not to trust them anymore so in terms of putting yourself out there, I don't, well, I'm quite a confident person, I suppose, as well. So it doesn't really bother me too much, but I don't get any criticism from people. People just don't follow, like, share. They won't bother if they're not the people who are like me. Mm. So really, that's, I don't that's think, okay, isn't it? unless you're going hardcore out there to be like this sort of, unless you're trying to be Mike Winnett on LinkedIn, <laughs> <laughs> all these people out uh, where well, you might get some flack because yeah. people aren't too sure who he's criticizing sometimes um you know you can't really go wrong you know mm. and you just mentioned 
um, about uh, speaking and, and the talks that you do and workshops that you host. Now, I actually first met you. I mean, I'd kind of seen you, you know, in, on LinkedIn and, and in, on, in the social media online world. Um, so yes. to come and actually see you at a local business expo was brilliant. Do you, do you um, really enjoy speaking at events? What I love, I love speaking at events. I've recently been doing some MC work as well, which I literally loved my life. Um, because what I'm doing at these things is I love giving is one of my values. Okay. So I give a lot of my time and energy talking um, with people, doing one-to-ones, doing workshops, now emceeing as well. And what I love about it is that I get to give people, I always think it's like a bit of a magic show. I'm actually a qualified teacher. And one of the things I found most magical about teaching is that you'd walk in with your lesson plan. The students have no idea what you're going to tell them. (laughs) It was amazing. At the end of the session, you'd be like, pull a rabbit out of the hat and they'd all go, ah, that's what we're doing here. This is amazing. (laughs) And I love doing that at workshops. And um, also when you're emceeing, like making people feel something, making people feel happy, positive, like they've learned something, they take something away, they feel empowered. Like it really floats my boat and benefits them. So. I love my life. <laughs> I have to say, just um, just on that as well, you, every time I've spoken to you, I mean, we've met up in person actually quite a few times and, you know, spoken a lot. But actually, I've probably seen your posts across social media and your online presence, like, you know, a thousand times more than the, the real life interaction that we've had. And I have to say... Every single time that I see stuff from you, it is, I love, I love my life. I love my work. I love this. There is not one negative post that no, no rants, no nothing. So to me, I'm just like, Annie's James, my God, she's like this, like a fraggle from Fraggle Rock. Like she's always happy and smiley. And do you know what I mean? Like, and that's, and that's what you ooze. And I, I massively dig that. And I, I love that you're so consistent with that. Yeah, well, the number one thing people say to me is, oh, I saw, I saw you online. Every time I ever, every time I ever, they're like, oh, yeah, I saw you on LinkedIn. Oh, I saw that thing you did on LinkedIn. I'm like, oh, cool. But it's, so, it's weird. And I even get people now, which is so strange, because I don't want this to sound conceited at all, because I don't believe in that. It's not part of my brand values. <laughs> but people say, oh, my God, you're Annalise James. And I'm like, yes. I don't know who you are. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Positive stuff I put out there. People like to feel happy. Like we try, I think babies, like we try to avoid things that make us feel sad and unhappy. And we resonate towards people that make us feel good. Um, people don't want drama, really. They might thrive on drama sometimes. But actually, people want a peaceful, happy proactive life they want to feel successful and if I can help people feel that way with posts or helping them to enable them to build a brand through doing that too then happy days man love my life I do love my life I said it again (laughs) I think that's it I think the way that you say it because you say it like in real life as in the words that you've literally just said as well as writing it in posts um is just yeah it is infectious isn't it and like when I see your stuff I'm like oh wow she's speaking at that event or oh wow she's hosting the Southampton Marathon which happened recently you know and I'm just like wow this girl is just on fire and and I actually love it and genuinely I know it's only a social media post but I think there's so much nonsense online that actually when you do see someone that's really happy and genuine and and not just going me 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 um it actually does make me kind of feel warm and fuzzy um and think oh wow like what can I do today to really love my life do you know what I mean like it it really does affect people that see it well, I think this is the thing. People spend a lot of time. I mean, I, you know, I spent years and years in my career not loving my life. Yeah. You know, I worked for companies. I, you know, it was great while I was there. Like I had, you know, had great teams and whatever. But I actually was like, I don't love this. Like, I don't love this. What do I love? And it takes you a long time to figure mm-hmm. that out. I mean, I'm 35 this year. And I think finally, literally in the last few months, I have actually thought, yes. Oh, my God, I finally know maybe what I'm doing this is great um and I think you know we live such a short period of time it's like 30,000 days or something we have on the planet in total I think it's slightly more than that actually I can't remember but I think it's around that and that is not a long time we are literally a speck of dust in the universe aren't we Mm. so make the absolute most of every single minute that you have breathing oxygen and loving life like the sun is out 
go to the beach, do something you like, help other people, like be a good person. There's just so much niceness that can happen. I think because of social media, because of the news, like people get negged out and sad and drama. But I think, come on, people. You're a living, breathing organism, man, on this earth. Like, God, this planet only exists by chance anyway. So make the most of it. I'm going uh, existential. I'm going existential. Can you tell, Kerry? <laughs> I, think, I think I need a T-shirt, like, be more Annalise, you know? Be more Annalise. What would Annalise do? Actually, that's something people say quite often. What would Annalise do? So yeah, it on a mug. Yes, I'll get a wristband for everyone. <laughs> no, that's available on my website. That's yeah. <laughs> CBC, everyone. <laughs> now, can you, um, yeah, so you, you talked about, you know, not enjoying life in, you know, the working world. Like, what, what was the, the moment um, that led you to just go out on your own and start your own business? So, interesting story. Okay, I, I'm always very, very inspired by powerful women or women who are strong, independent women. Yeah, and mm. I think they're really just inspirational man so I had a media teacher way back when when I was about 14 mm. I was like I want to be her shout out to Betsan Williams if she's here anywhere <laughs> in the world listening I don't know um Betsan Williams and I was like she is amazing so I was like I want to be her she was my media teacher so I spent years I did my um all my A-levels five A-levels did my degree did my master's finally became a teacher got literally a, a shot out of nowhere to do it took on the job, started teaching. I was 23 and I was qualified, which was amazing. Mm. But what happened was I got bullied really badly for two years by this woman um, who didn't want me there, which was super sad because for me, I just hit my like, I've found the career of my dreams. The students love me. I love my life. Um, But she quite clearly wasn't happy for me to be there. And I realized as well that some other the staff weren't the same as me I thought we were all there for the kids like mm. helping them fulfill their dreams like being Disney princesses you know what I mean like everything's ethereal but no 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 people were like I want this classroom I want these computers I want this level of student blah blah blah, blah. and I was like oh okay so I left the profession which sucked actually I have to say because it was kind of wasted but alas I moved into a couple of different jobs and then I ended up in marketing and all of those skills I'd learned through my media degree and then my film masters Mm. all came flooding back and I ended up doing internal comms and was a photographer for a bit for the college um, did all the web web edits, um, news alerts, um, loads of high level events for different like MPs and people that came in, loads and loads of stuff, event planning and I loved it because I loved the college. I used to work at Fairham College. It was amazing. But um, eventually I was like, I feel safe. I feel safe here. Mm. And so I changed I, I changed and worked at a university. And again, it was great for my network, like huge, uh, huge employer in the South, um, loads of connections. But I was just like, I don't really want to do what other people say all the time. <laughs> Particularly when they're saying new stuff that you think, I'm not sure that's the best way of doing it, but you're not listening to me. So um, I thought, right, do you know what? I was in the best paid job of my career. I had no money whatsoever. I'd literally no savings. And I just handed my notice in. And I just jumped into obscurity. (laughs) And you know what happened? My fabulous network of people who'd been following me because I didn't realise I'd already started to establish a personal brand. This this wealth of people came out of the woodwork and just supported me and booked me and wanted me to work with them on this and that and blah, 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 blah. I mean, the first six months was mental. Frankly, it was crazy, like up and down. I was doing all sorts of stuff. And then um, what I recognized was after a little bit of reflection was that all of, I didn't do any sales at all. Nothing. Everything came to me. And I realized it's because I was consistently putting things out there that was useful, upbeat, happy. So I sat back and I thought, right, this is personal branding, isn't it? This is what I've done. I didn't even realize this. And I sat back and I looked at my values and I looked at the things I've been posting and looked at the way I communicated and actually thought about my brand. And then since then, it's just been really successful and just continued actually, just as it was. And I finished my first year earning more than I made in my last job which I was super stoked about so uh 
yeah, just weird. Happened sort of by chance and emerged. But I think that's the way best thing, the best things happen, really. Yeah, that's really impressive, actually. Um, and I think a lot of people are scared to go out on their own because there's so many horror stories out there like anything in life about um you know oh you know first year of business you're not going to earn anything you've got to put all this money in you've got to you know live on ap noodles um and it's, it's just so negative isn't it whereas actually if you're in like standing in your zone of genius and you know you've got this network of people and people are helping you they're sending you referrals you're actually just happier so therefore actually better at your job and delivering amazing results for clients or products or whatever you're doing it doesn't have to be awful does it well the other thing is which i didn't realize is you actually can capitalize on a personal brand if you're employed um and you can start now like if you're actually so this is what happened for me i actually escalated my career through that college over a five-year period i just they just kept taking chances on me Mm. because they knew me and they trusted me but it's because I was consistent in everything I said and did so you can actually establish a personal brand for your own career progression in an organization too yeah you just need to think strategically about the people who are seeing you and then look at how you build your brand how you're consistent how you deliver all the time again and again and again and then they will start to lift you and then you'll get further in your career but if you want to if you're thinking in the next I don't know, six months, a year that you'll actually go self-employed, then start your brand now. Mm. You know, start thinking about the outputs you put out on social media. Make yourself more employable. Make yourself more noticed by people. There's no reason why you can't. And I say this to people and they're just like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, social media exists just for, well, for everything, not just for cats on skateboards. Come on, people. <laughs> yeah. Let's use it properly and positively so yeah absolutely it's so true isn't it and then um, like you just said about you know progressing within a company because you have that reputation that's the mm-hmm. same externally as well so that's why people get headhunted because they've heard great things about other people yeah and it's going back to that brand advocate piece mm. so people refer you advocate for you i mean i don't have to do any business i don't say se- i don't sell ever it's not part of my shtick anyway actually but I would never actually be like, oh, hi, by the way, come book this. Like, I've done like a workshop once, I think, on LinkedIn. But otherwise, it's just all just incoming traffic. Mm-hmm. And it's because I, if you make, if you make people follow you, it doesn't sound right. If, if you create an engagement with people emotionally, they buy into your story and they want to be a part of it. They kind of want to be on the boat, right? They follow you because you make them feel something. And then they feel so positively, they tell everyone about you. And it just expands and expands and expands. And then happy days, man. You know, just critical mass of people who think you're great and want to use you. It's lovely. It's humbling. It to be in. So how do those who want to start creating um, a personal brand or, or start thinking about it anyway, what, what would be the first step for them to take? So first things first, Annalise's golden rules of personal branding. <laughs> Okay, you have to think about your values, okay? And now values is a bit of a funny term because I went to a workshop a while ago and people were debating about what the term value means, blah, blah, blah. But I, for me, values are your core beliefs, those things that really drive you, motivate you. So whatever you want to call them, I call them values, but it's those key drivers for you. So you think about what makes you get out of bed in the morning, okay? Is it giving... Is it being really optimistic? Is it um, being useful to other people? Is it being knowledgeable? You know, whatever those key things are, like what are your aspirational things? What are you doing? So you make a list of five things. Well, actually, I'd always suggest to make a list of about a page worth and then go through and think, right, well, what actually are the ones? Like out of this 5,000 list, what are my absolute key drivers here? Then what you do is you think about how you translate those values into activities that people can um, find tangible. So example giving, as I keep saying, my example is giving. So what I do is I create tangible things that the audience can use. So I do blogs, I do videos, I do colleagues getting coffee. I do a lot of my content around giving. I also talk and uh, speak at events and stuff like that. And sometimes I do that for free because charitable stuff as well. So that's nice. 
But these are all things that if anyone said, oh, oh Annalise, she's really giving, tick in the box. Thank you. Yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Hallelujah. Okay. But what you have to do when you're thinking about your activities is you can't just think, I'm just going to endlessly put content out there about me. Mm. You have to think about benefits. And I like to talk about Popeye at this point, as you do. <laughs> You ready for this? Okay. I'm so ready. I can't wait. I love Popeye. Okay. So I call this the sales process, but I don't know if it really is a sales process, but this is what I call it. Right. Popeye has a need. Kerry, what does Popeye need? Spinach. Yes. But why does he need spinach? Oh, to get strong. Yes. Because what's happened? Someone's insulted olive oil, right? Yeah. And he is pissed. Okay. So he needs to kick someone's ass. Right. So he's got a need. The need is he wants to be strong. Yep. What's the product? Spinach. Spinach, yes. Hallelujah, yes. Okay, and what are the features of the spinach? Do we know? What are the cold, shiny facts about spinach? It's good for you. <laughs> okay, yes, it's a vegetable it's a feature. Yeah. It's got iron in it. It's green. Some people say it's yummy. I am one of those people. Mm -hmm. um, so he has a need which he wants to kick someone's ass. He has a product and it's called spinach. And the features, of the, uh, the features of the product is that it's green, iron and yummy, okay? But that is cold, hard, shiny facts, isn't it? What does it do? What's the benefit? The benefit is he gets big muscles and he can kick someone's butt. The benefit is olive oil thinks he's the greatest boyfriend ever. Yep. The benefit is Bluto is scared of him so it makes Popeye feel great about himself. He's got big ego boost. Benefits, 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 okay? So I always talk about Popeye because people seem to understand it. But what happens is, in life, we talk about, I need a new car. Okay, what about this, say it, say it, over here. Okay, the features of the say it is it's got, I don't know, power steering, reverse, what's it, you know, cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, you tell I know a lot about cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's, got, it's got a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a horn okay features are those cold shiny those cold hard facts that people don't really care about like people might be techie like oh it's got a usb cable or yeah. wi-fi connection whatever but people will buy the car because they feel a certain way in the car yeah so they, it makes them feel great they feel like their friends think they're rich you know they can impress their work colleagues you know, they can fit their family in and put a divider up so they can't hear their kids. <laughs> they get a peep and quiet, you know. Whatever it is, it makes them feel something, and that's the benefit. So we actually need to scratch the feature and the product, really. We just need to think about the need. What does somebody need, and how do you benefit them? Wow. So Love that's, that. basically, that's basically it. So you think about your values. You think about how they translate into tangible things, but then you think about the benefit of that. And then... Once you've thought about the benefit and, you know, what people are actually going to get out of it, you think, how do I communicate that effectively? Then you put out consistent messaging to that effect. You create that collective critical mass. People trust you. Then they follow you. Bada bing, bada boom, personal brand. Done. Wow. And would you say it is literally just a case of figuring out those benefits and how people can sort of you know fit your product service or whatever into their life or business um and then it literally is just a case of what just like posting about those benefits or are you kind of secretly talking about them in a different way does that make sense yeah yeah so for me you need to know your audience so who are you talking to mm -hmm. and how do you know that they are their benefits mm. which is you know it has to be very personalized way of communicating so i know my certain audience are um you know, going to relate to things I talk about. And so they'll want to contact me based off that. But if, you're, if your audience is slightly different, you're, you'll need to think about your benefits and how actually, I'm saying benefit like 50,000 times, benefit, <laughs> benefit, benefit. Um, you know, how you actually benefit those specific people. So it can be really, really, really specific. Okay, so we're thinking about um, Popeye and we're thinking, you know, he has an ego boost because of olive oil. So it can be individual. So this is where your customer... Um, profiling comes in yeah when they think about you know um you know you've got your Doreen and Doreen is a uh, 50 year old housewife who needs xyz from you 
Mm -hmm. you know, and then you've got Bob and Bob needs X, Y, Z. So you think about those specific character profiles and how you would impact their life. So one is corporate, maybe one is SME, one is whatever. Um, But yeah, you consistently put it out there. But for me, because my brand isn't particularly, I wouldn't say gregarious. It's not like the me, me, me show because it doesn't fit my brand. Um, I communicate in such a way that I don't, I'm sort of, sounds kind of bad because it sounds like I'm being fake, but it's not, but I'm, I'm humble about things. Mm-hmm. Like a good example of this is recently you did a press release for me. Yep. And I wanted to share that, but I didn't want to say, Oh my God, Kerry's the best thing ever. Look what she did. She got me in this page paper and this paper and this paper and blah, 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 blah online. Cause that to me is too braggy about myself. Yeah. yeah. So I made it sort of sarcastic, slightly self diminishing and said, you know, Kerry said she'd make me an international superstar, which is a bit sarcastic, which is also my brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and oh my God, she actually did. So I'm actually deflecting all of that onto you and giving you all the congratulation and praise. But whilst obviously people are like, that's amazing, Annalise. Oh my God, you've got in here and here and here. So yeah. you're kind of clever about the way that you communicate, but you need to put together a bit of a content plan about how, what sort of content you put out, when you put it out, when your audience are listening, all of that sort of stuff. So it's, it kind of moves into content marketing then after you sort of put all your brand ideas together and your assets and your pictures and your, your values together. But yeah, it's quite, it's actually quite a big task and it's quite challenging to think about. Once you start ticking it over, you could do it gradually, like one value at a time, sort of weaving that in. But if you're consistent at the end of a year and you said to people, what are my values? They should be able to tell you what you thought they were. Like a magic show when you're a teacher. Boom. <laughs> and I have to say, the, the uh, social media post that you talked about then with you saying, uh, in essence, just saying, hey, I've just been featured in all these cool places, but you didn't yeah. say that at all. Um, that actually goes with your giving value because I got tons of connection requests and so many people were like, oh, wow, that's amazing, Annalise. Kerry, we need to talk. Like, like it was, it was unreal. Yeah. So now I am, I haven't got any new business from it, but I have now been put on the radar of loads of new people that I did not know and that they'd never heard of me. So actually it it was, it was very clever and you might not have known you were intentionally doing that, but it was, it was very, very good. So yeah. My brand values is uh, collaboration. So Ah. where I can pull people in together so we all mutually benefit from bigger networks. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Probably under collaboration. <laughs> well, well done. You are living by your brand values. I respect that a lot. <laughs> oh, darling. Got a, you got to um, follow by example, haven't you? Lead by example. Lead by Absolutely. example. Yeah. So is there anything else that you feel is really important for people to know that we haven't covered at all? I think for me, it's about, because obviously when you start working in this area, you need to think about, online as a tool for you and not just thinking about it as um like a necessary evil Mm. i think some people with social and i mean it can be overwhelming social media because it's a bit much but i just say to people don't get in your own head about it do what feels right you know if you just start with one value and you think okay i'll just start this journey and trickle it along and see how it goes and i'll try scheduling at this time or with this sort of imagery or whatever But, you know, don't get overwhelmed by it. Um, I think that's the thing is that it can be, like you said at the beginning, quite scary for people. Mm. Um, A lot of your, the the one thing I'll also say is that a lot of your brand is is visibility. And some of that comes from just that consistent approach. So not necessarily what you say, but how everything looks and feels. So branding for me also is about how you dress yourself, how you dress your website, how you dress your Twitter, Facebook, um, LinkedIn accounts. So making sure your banners and headers and you use similar colors mm. um, because it's those little psychological things that tap into people and they think, oh yeah, teal, that's Annalise's color. Teal is not my color. It doesn't belong to me. But people <laughs> are so great. So whenever they see that color, it's quite a popular color, that's, they think about me. So it's like recognition and, and things. So it's just about starting at you, thinking about what you are all about. And if you're doing something and you think it's part of your brand but doesn't feel comfortable, probably not part of your brand. 
Mm. That's probably what I'd say. I love yeah. that. Oh, thank you so much for sharing all that. Honestly, I could just talk on this all day. It's just yeah. such a fascinating topic. So thank you so much for being here today with us. Um, and how can someone that wants to find out more hear about Annalise James and how you can help them? Well, they can go to my website. So all of the things I do, I sit in my website because um, it's useful for um, visibility and kind of a one-stop shop for everything Annalise. So um, it's annaliesejames.uk and it's Annalise, which is weird. It's A-N-N-E-L-I-E-S, James. And it's interesting fact, Anne Frank was also spelled Annalise, full name Annalise Frank. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, interesting fact there. Um, so, Anne, not Anne Frank. God, I was going to say Anne Frank. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go to annefrank.uk. Go to Annalise James. <laughs> dot uk good grief um yeah my website's everything there so you can get my colleagues getting coffee episodes you can get my ask and lease episodes you can get my blogs but you can also find me on social media and pretty much everywhere and my uh, my facebook because i'm personal is my i have a facebook profile which is my business profile so it's me as a person so if you want to add me as a friend feel free Amazing. And are we going to start to see some t-shirts and mugs on the website? <laughs> uh, we do. Uh, wristbands are coming to the store soon. <laughs> there is a store, but there will be. Give me a minute. <laughs> um, I love it. Well, it's been, sorry. All sorts of merch on its way. <laughs> I can't wait. I must simply must have some of those. <laughs> well, Thank you so much, Annalise. And uh, I thoroughly recommend um, that listeners go and, and check out her website, annaliesejames.uk. Um, is just a, it's a brilliant hub of all things um, Annalise and videos and tons of stuff. I sometimes sit there like on a lunch break and I'm like, oh, I need to switch my brain off. What can I watch? And I'll go and catch an episode. Um, so I really, really recommend you go and do that. Um, thank you so much for listening. And I shall see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.